Good morning, eighth grade. It's Wednesday, February 3rd. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to seek reward, except that of knowing that I do your will. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, go ahead and solve the warm up and, um, and then come on back. Okay, problem number one was to solve the system of equations and find x, y, or x times y. I love this problem, absolutely love this problem because this is the kind of problem you're gonna see on standardized tests. Um, it's a great algebra problem because it requires you to do um, a couple of different things. So the first thing we need to do is to solve the system. And when I look at that system, I have to think, well, what's the easiest way to solve it? And I see two possibilities. I could solve it by elimination and I could subtract the second equation from the first equation, or I could create an equivalent system um, and try and cancel out the y's because they are already opposite signs. And that's what I'm gonna do. I prefer to find the equivalent system and not have to multiply things by negative numbers if I can avoid it. So if I multiply the bottom equation by two, I end up with 2x minus 2y equals 4. Okay, I multiplied each number by 2. And then I just bring down my, my top equation, which was x plus 2y equals 6. Now I can add those two equations together, and the y's are going to drop out. I end up with 3x, no, yeah, 3x equals 10 divide by three, so x equals 10 over three. Ooh, fractions. Okay, got a fraction for my answer. Let's, now we gotta plug in and solve for y. I'm gonna plug into the second equation. I think I like that one better. The x minus y equals two. So 10 thirds minus y equals two. So if I subtract 10 thirds, Negative y equals 2 minus 10 thirds. Well, 2 is, if I rewrite that as a fraction, is 6 thirds. 6 thirds minus 10 thirds is a negative 4 thirds. But that was negative y. So y is a positive 4 thirds. So x is 10 thirds. y is 4 thirds. But the problem asks me to find x, y. So I have to multiply them together. So 10 thirds times 4 thirds is 40 over 9. And that's the answer. OK, that is a great test prep problem. Um, and I can tell you right now, you should expect to see something like that on a test of mine, OK, or a test or a quiz or both. Um, because this is really a good problem. You're going to see it on a, you're going to see it on like an SAT or a PSAT or an ACT. That's the kind of question they're going to put on there. Okay, so great problem. All right, let's talk about number two. Number two was kind of going back to our functions days, and so f of negative two plus g of three, um, when f of x is negative x squared and g of x is the square root of 27x. Ooh, this is a good one too. This is another um, standardized test problem. You're gonna see something like this on a standardized test for sure. Because there's a lot of little details in here we have to think about. So we need to find f of negative two and then add it to g of three. So let's find f of negative two. f of negative two is going to be negative negative two squared. Okay, the opposite of negative two squared. So this is really important. The negative is not in the parentheses there. Okay, so order of operations says I have to do the x squared and then take the opposite of it. So when I do that, negative 2 squared is a positive 4, but I want the opposite of that. So f of negative 2 is negative 4. Okay. So negative four plus g of three. Well, g of three is going to be the square root of 27 times three. 
27 times 3 is 81. So g of 3 is the square root of 81, which is 9. So f of negative 2 plus g of 3 is going to be negative 4 plus 9, or 5. OK, great problem. Um, spend a little bit of time on this. Make sure you understand how to do this problem. And if you have any questions, talk to your tutor, because this is a really good problem to know how to, to solve. And this and um, the first one we did, for sure. OK? OK, let's talk about today's lesson. OK, so today is where we kind of put it all together. and. I give you some choice and I say here, um, here's a system of equations, figure out how to solve it. And so you have to think about which method you want to use to solve the system, um, either substitution or elimination or finding an equivalent system. So when you are watching this video and when you're doing your homework, I would recommend you have that cheat sheet handy and that you think about and look at the, the little clues on there um, that will help you decide which way to solve these different problems most efficiently. You can technically solve these problems using any of the methods. It's just that some methods are gonna be easier than others depending on the problem, okay? So we're gonna solve, I'm gonna solve a few examples. I'm not gonna do a ton of problems, just solve a few examples, and then um, you can go work on your homework assignment. Um, this first problem I solve is super important, so um, stay tuned here for a second. Okay. Um, this first problem is really important. We haven't solved one that works out completely like this one yet, and so I want to show this to you. So um, first thing, I look at the problem, and I probably don't want to do substitution. Um, I don't have an equation solved for a variable. And in order to do elimination and um, equivalent system, I need to get them both into standard form. And the bottom equation is in standard form, but the top one is not. So I need to transform this top equation. And so I can um, subtract 6x, so negative 6x plus 2y equals 4 if I subtract the 6x to the other, or to both sides, basically. And then the bottom equation, so then I've got negative 3x plus y equals a negative 5. Now my equations are in standard form, and I can um, figure out how I want to solve them. Well, I think the best way to solve this is going to be to try, well, I can do it either way. I think I'm going to try and get the, um, the y's or yeah the y's to cancel out because they're a smaller number so if i multiply the bottom equation by a negative two then i'll get a negative two y right and so then this would these will work okay if i multiply by a negative two on the bottom equation okay so my first top equation is going to stay the same negative six x plus two y equals four if i multiply this equation by a negative two Let's see here. Is that right? Yes. So I'm going to end up with 6x minus 2y equals a positive 10, right? If I multiply negative 2 on each of those. And now I'm going to add my equations together. Negative 6x plus 6x is 0. That one canceled out too. That canceled out. So I have 0 and then 2y minus 2y is 0. So 0 equals 4 plus 10 is 14. Oh, so both of my variables dropped out and I got a false statement, right? Because 0 does not equal 14. What does that mean if we get a false statement? Okay, think about what a system of equations is. Remember, when we were solving a system with graphing, we said, well, that's where the two lines cross, right? We're finding the point where they cross. Well, what happens if there's no solution? What do we know about lines that have no solution? They're parallel. So these two lines are actually parallel lines. Now, you don't have to say that, but what you do have to say is if you get something like this, you would say no solution, OK? Because they don't cross. We saw that when we were graphing, remember? But we can get that same answer without graphing if we just get a false statement. So the same thing applies. What happens if I would have done my equations and all my variables dropped out and I got like 0 equals 0? That's a true statement, right? So if, that, if I got 0 equals 0, if I got a true statement, what do we know about those? Again, back to when we were graphing, 
that means that they're the same line. So they're the same line and they would have infinite solutions. Okay, so if you get a true statement, all the variables drop out, you get a true statement, there's infinite solutions. If you um, solve it, all the variables drop out and you get a false statement, there's no solution because of parallel lines, okay? So I wanted to do that, hint, hint, you do have a problem on your homework assignment um, where you're gonna end up with no solution, okay? So be on the lookout for that. Okay, let's do a couple more. Um, let's do this one, just to review. Let's do y equals two x plus one and x plus y equals five. Now again, this whole assignment, this whole lesson today is about you getting to pick which method do you want to use to solve the system. This one, my top equation is already solved for y. So substitution is a good choice because I can substitute 2x, for one, 2x plus one in for y and I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna plug this into my sec second equation. So x plus 2x plus one equals five. So three x plus one equals five, subtract one, three x equals four, so x equals four over three, okay? And then now I need to solve for y, so I got a fraction. So I'm gonna plug into, I'm gonna plug into the first equation. Y equals two times x, which is four thirds plus one, y equals 8 thirds plus 1, but 1 is the same as 3 over 3, so y equals 11 thirds. And so my answer is 4 thirds comma 11 thirds. If you want to rewrite them as mixed numbers, you can, but you don't have to, okay? You could leave them as an improper fraction, and I'm okay with that. Okay, so that was substitution. That was an example of when you should use substitution, when you have one of your equations already solved for a variable. Okay, and let's do one more. Let's do 3x plus 5y equals 10 and 3x minus 5y equals 2. Okay, I don't want to use substitution. Um, the good news is this one, I can do elimination, right? I already have 5y and negative 5y. They're already going to drop out if I just add the two equations together. So 3x plus 3x is 6x. 6x equals 12. So x equals two. And then I plug into one of the equations to find y. Um, and I'll plug into the top one. So three times two plus five y equals 10. Six plus five y equals 10. Five y equals four, so y equals four fifths. So my solution is two comma four fifths. Okay, and that was an example of elimination. So the first problem that we did that ended up having no solution was one that we did finding an equivalent system. Um, then we did a substitution problem and then we did um, an elimination problem. So those are the three different types. Those are your three choices when you're working on your homework assignment. Okay, so your homework assignment is a worksheet. I want you to do two through 14 even. Um, Think about how you feel about today's lesson. Be sure again, talk with your tutor about any, any concepts you don't understand. Tomorrow, we're working on the same stuff. So come on back tomorrow. We'll do a little bit more practice um, and get you ready for this week's quiz. There is a quiz on Thursday, okay? So um, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen.